All right, we're live. So uh, today we're gonna be talking about Rhizolome stuff. So let's find a project. Okay, so this right here is the first project I'll be talking about. So as you know, a regular square wall, it's pretty easy to map. So I decided to go with something a little bit more advanced and it's also not symmetrical. So um, I'll be walking through how to uh, map this wall properly. So this is a 45 degree rotated wall. Um, it has these little bumps that are uh, asymmetrical and it also has these custom shaped uh, half triangle panels on the bottom to fill in the shape. Alright, so if you scroll down here, this is how I uh, went with the pixel map, how I'm going to map it in Resolum. I felt like this would be the easiest and best way, which actually was the easiest and best way because they did have to switch up a few panels live on site from the slice one. Um, and it was just a very easy fix, just taking out a few pixels off of that. Minus two panels, which was 3.9 pixel pitch, which was 256 pixels shorter, I believe. Alright, so let me open up Resolume. And let's go through... So I could open the project, but I think it would be better off if we started from scratch. So... It should take no more than a few minutes. Alright, output, advanced, let's do something new. Alright, so first thing we want to do is we want to determine how many panels those slices are. So I'm going to hit save and close. I'm going to open up the plot again. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to count the panels. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So the full grid as a full square, the widest width and the highest height is a 13 by 13 grid. Uh, the first section here is 11 panels. So let's go here. Um, let's go back to output, advance, let's take the first slice and make it 11, 11 panels high. So 11 times 128 would come out to be 1408. So 1408 by 128. So this right here is our first slice. And then if we go back to the plot, the next one would be, the next two would be the same thing, minus one slice on the bottom, which is, so it would be, so what I would do is, I would go back to the output, so I would just drag, take my alt key, drag the slice here, now go into the height, and just do minus 128, which is the size of one panel, and then I'll snap it to the top, alt again, minus 128, snap it to the top. Okay, next panel, I know it's going to be, I'm just going to show you here, it's going to be one panel higher, but one panel lower. So it's going to be the same exact size, the slice that we just uh, created. And then minus four from there. So let's go back to our, up, uh, uh, our output. So we'll do alt, drag, and now from top, I'm going to do negative 128. And now alt drag, go to height, minus 128. Now I'm gonna snap it to the top. Height minus 128. Snap to the top. And I believe I said the next four were the same top point. Minus 128. Okay, so now we're over here. Let's go see what the next step is. So then it's um, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and then the next two, four, five, six is the same, same concept. So let's go here. Let's drag one here. This one is the same size, but just higher. So we'll go to top, minus 128, alt, two, let's make the height, minus 128, and we'll snap it to the top. Alt, height, minus 128, snap, we're pretty much just going to go till the end till we reach one panel, minus 128, minus 128, and I believe we have one more after this, 
So drag alt, snap, minus 128. All right, this is pretty much our full wall here. Now we're just going to take the whole thing and just snap it into the canvas. Um, as you know, this right here is actually a 45 degree rotated wall, so we're going to grab a corner. Once you see this little rotating icon, you're going to hold on your shift key, which uh, rotates in increments of 45 degrees, like in a locking rotate. Boom. Now we're going to snap it into the canvas. Now our composition, I'm just going to hit new, save and new. Uh, our canvas is going to be the widest width and the highest height. So I'm going to go to composition, settings, and whenever you rotate it on a 45 degree angle, it always uh, comes out to like this weird dot something. So I always round it off to one pixel higher. I round it off. So for example, this one right here, I'll make it 2354 by 10087. So 1087. Uh, we're going to name this Rotate 45 Mountain. Now I'm going to hit apply. Now, as you see here, this is our uh, grid. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create, for starters, let me save this because if I by mistake hit something else, it will delete it. So, rotate Mountain. I'm going to hit save and close so it saves it, and then I'll open it up again. Uh, next thing I would do is I would create uh, another screen here and I would draw out a polygon. So I would go here, uh, hit polyline, and I would just start to draw out a Norman Mouse's. So strange. And I'm just going to snap it over there. Now, with polylines, if you make sure this uh, magnet icon here is so, uh, selected on, it will snap to any edge you have in uh, Resolume. So, for example, if I take this here, if you look carefully, it's actually snapping. So now I'm snapping to the edges. And now, as you remember, the bottom row here, this was half triangle panel, so this is non-existent. So that's why it's not going into this canvas. All right, now that we have this uh, polygon here, I'm going to go into transform so the points edit is done. Now, I'm going to go to the composition, and I'm going to update the size of this composition, the height being 996. 996, apply. Now, as you see, so for starters, I'm going to delete this slice here. I'm going to name this shape of wall. I always like that polygon is not necessary. It's only necessary when you want to make border lines and stuff like that. I'm going to show you for an example in a minute. Um, so this is exactly what I would, so how I would map the input. Um, so for, let's close the polygon. Uh, let's go into my screen one, select all the slices. Let's go to my output transformation. Um, I want to map this in my processor, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to right-click, Match Input Shape. Next, we're going to select the screen, and we're going to go into the width of the processor. You, for example, let's use a M Control 4K. So let's make it 4K. 3840 by 2160. You know what? Let's assume this is a processor with a scaler in it. So this would be my uh, input. But as you know, the processor is uh, most probably uh, processing the panels in a square orientation, not 45 degree. So what we would do is we'd grab the corner here, hit shift, and rotate it back to normal. And I'll actually show you an example of the map that I did for the actual project. So we would map something like this. Um, if we're using a processor with a scaler, you would probably drag this to the extents, and this would be your output, which is how, this is exactly how it was on site. This was my output, this was my input. Alright, now I just wanted to show you why I created the polygon. So, if you go to sources here, we do, uh, let's say, outliner. I'm going to use Resolve's built-in one, so this way anybody looking at this tutorial can follow along. Um, so, this is the slice outline here. If I go to my slices, um, if your slices tab is not visible here, for any of you new people, you could just go to uh, over here, view, and hit show slices. 
so you can follow along. Now I'm going to take the shape of the wall, which is the polygon we made, drop it into the slice, and as you can see here, we have a slice that's exactly the shape of the wall now. So if we go to our output, advanced, uh, let's go to our... I actually have to turn it on, that's why. Output, advanced. So as you see here, uh, let's shut off the polygon, turn on the... So you can see, even though our wall is mapped in strips, essentially, and the reason why I did it in strips is I could do easy adjustments if they cut out a panel here, cut out a panel here, so it literally just... I'll actually show you how to adjust it in a minute. So this is how I would make... The reason why I make a polygon, it just makes it very easy. Once you start doing round corners and stuff, polygons get a lot more complicated. I usually end up just exporting an SVG from uh, Resolum and doing stuff in Illustrator or After Effects, stuff like that. Alright, so now on this gig itself, they actually took off two panels from here. So how did I fix that? So what I did was, I just took the panels, I held shift, rotated it back to normal. I took the first panel here. Um, I went to the height and I minus the amount of pixels. So I did minus 256, which is two panels. Now I did uh, from the top. So when you minus pixels, it goes to the center. So I minus one panel from the top, one panel from the bottom. But I still have to go down uh, a little more panel, one more panel. So I'm going to do plus 128. So as you can see here, we can take it back, hold shift, rotate 45. Now let's lock it back into place. Now our polygon got a little messed up. Let me X out this content because the slice did not uh, update. The polygon was not updated. So let's update this. Let's go to edit points. Now over here I'm going to have to add two points it seems like. So if you double click anywhere it will add two points. So let's remake this polygon. We're also going to have to redo our composition size because it just got one panel shorter. Snap. Snap. Just make sure it snaps so everything is uh, pixel perfect. Nothing worse than a pixel map that's not pixel perfect. Drives me nuts. I've done shows on other people's uh, outputs and I go crazy, even when it's off by like a half a pixel, it just drives me nuts. Okay, so this was the new shape that we had on site. Now I'm going to take the composition settings and I'm going to take the new height, which is 906, and update our composition size. Apply. So here, this was our new shape on site. Um, the reason why we had to cut down panels is because the ceiling height was a little too low and they started from instead of two feet they started at three feet so it wasn't a big deal still had a nice shape so as you can see here it did an update for some reason um, I'm not sure why Resolume doesn't update you'd actually have to uh, clear this and drag in a same thing again so we we'll go here go to slices drag in shape of wall drop it into the slice in and just make it white Thin it out just a tap. Now if we go to our output, we can see it, it's updated. Okay, um, let's try um, the other slice outliner. This one's a plugin from JSPAR. So let's do screen 2, which is our polygon. Um, the reason why I like this one, it also has a softness option. So as you can see, let's say I drag it in, you can add softness, and it gives it that cloudy effect. I actually used this live because it was like a mountain snowy effect, so I did like a snowy cloudy look, like with a very soft edge, which is really nice. Um, I actually have one more, this one's from Chaser. I would actually have to open Chaser to see how it does with this. Probably not going to do much because Chaser actually uses your slices. Okay, so this is our, let's just give it a shot, why not? So yeah, this is what Chaser would look like because it's working based off your slices. Um, what happens if we go into Chaser, shut the main, let's turn on just the poly. Does it register? Is there screen options here? No, I don't see screen options. 
I was trying to get the mortar to work just with my polygon, but I don't see, and I shut this screen. Let me hit File New if that does it. No. Okay, if we shut screen one, what if we shut the slices? Let me see, so would that do anything? Doesn't seem like it. Um, what if we take the outputs and swap them? Would that do it? I do see the line, but it's doing both screens. All right, forget it. So this one, oh, what happened to that one? Oh well, let's try it again. Let's go here. Uh, let's select screen one. Um, another reason why I like a uh, slice outline is because, for example, let's say we're using screen two with all the lines in it. There's an option called merge shapes. I don't know why it's not working perfectly. Like there's a line in the middle. Usually what happens is when shapes are touching, it merges them which is really cool when you're doing very complex uh, kinds of shapes and stuff. All right, what else can we talk about here? Output, advanced. All right, yeah, so that's pretty much how we would map. And obviously, if the wall, if the processor was not scalable, which is just the standard processing, um, all you would have to do is just snap it to the corner. Oh, I wanted to show you the actual map. Let me see if I can find it. Let me open my files here. Um, screen export. Let me see if it's this one. No. I'm looking at my other monitor right now. Okay. Where would it be? Oh, here we go. This is actually how I map the wall. Let me open it. This is how I actually map the wall. Um, these two panels came out, so we just took them out and just sent a new path path without these two panels. But this is pretty much how I did it. This is actually a back view. I always send a back view to the people who are building it because whenever they're wiring it, they're standing in the back, so it's easier to reference off of. I always add this little text in the middle with like back view, which in uh, Nova Star, it's called company logo. When you're exporting, you just put in a name. Usually, people put in their company name. I would just put in back view so people see it more because a lot of times people confuse back view, front view, and the whole wall would be wired backwards, which is still not a big deal. It takes two minutes just to remap it in your software. Even if the wall is like 100 panels, there's a lot of auto tools that just make it very easy. So I never usually have an issue with that as long as people know what they did. And even if not, I could just hit the mapping tool and usually the panels display exactly where it's mapped and how it's mapped. Uh, sometimes it takes a few minutes if it, the wall has a lot of different shapes and configurations just to wrap your head around it, but usually it's no big deal. I've never had an issue with that. All right, let's uh, try a different project. Um, let me see what else we have here. So we did another job a few weeks back. Actually, yeah, it was a few weeks back. Um, let me see if I can find it off. Um, where would we be? Probably my downloads. Let me see if I can find it. Okay. Oh, is this one right here? So we did this wall here. Um, this one actually also changed up, but we're just gonna um, use this specific map just because I have a plot of it already. Um, I actually have one with a pixel map on there already. Oh, I didn't put any dimensions. Nice. All right, so this is the wall. Um, I'm not gonna even use any of the pixel map specs. I'm gonna look at the panels and determine exactly how to create the wall. So I'm gonna map this in five different slices. Left, center, right, mid-center, right, mid-center, left. Okay, so I'm going to determine how wide this is, the widest width, and this is the, the widest width. Basically, just going to take the widest width and the highest height and then draw it out from there. So this one right here, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this one's 10 panels wide, but plus 5, so 10.5. So I'm going to go to my resolution output, output, advanced, uh, let's just make a new one. And then name. First, we're gonna, first thing we're going to do is where we save it. My name is Resolum. I'm just going to name the name of the project. Yeah. Save and close. 
So I think we said that one was 10.5 panels wide. So it's going to be 10.5 times 128, which comes out to be 1344. So 1344, enter. And then the height. So we'll just save that. Let's go back to the plot. The height was four panels high. So we're going to go here, which would come out to be 512. So we're going to go here, select the slice. Uh, height would be 512. And I'm just going to name this full um, The next slice would be drag this, I believe is 2 by 2. Let's just double check just to be sure. So, yeah, so this is one full, two halves, so that's two, and then two high. So, I'm going to go to output, advanced. I'm going to make this 256 by 256. Left two. Alright, the next one is going to be uh, center. Uh, let's go count out panels there. So it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is 10 wide. Um, two half panels, I always just make one full panel. Even a mapping, unless I'm doing RCFG stuff, um, I always just map it out as a square. Um, as as far as mapping is concerned, they don't care if it's a triangle, even though it's a different RCFG X file, but it it's only mapping. So only just pixels width and pixels height. I don't even have the loaded RCFG in there. I just have pixel width and the pixel height. Alright, so this one we said was 10 wide, which would be 10 times 128. You know, math, it would be 1280. And then it was 5 high. So we could do 1280 divided into 2. Let's see if my math is good. It would be 640. 640. I'm not using a calculator, by the way. Okay, now that's center. Um, drag Alt. I'm just going to name this right 2. And Alt. Perfect. And we're going to name this just right. Um, let's just configure this left to right. So left, left to, so left, left to. Okay, perfect. So this is the size of our wall. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do composition, hit new, uh, save a new, just save that. Now we have a new composition. We have composition, settings. I'm going to take the widest width, which is 4480 by 640. 640 by, and name this. Uh, apply. Why did that not work? Oh, I know, because I'm in my output section, so it did not register. And I actually built my whole wall on the output, which is pretty stupid, but right-click, match imp output shape, and go we'll match up, which is no big deal. All right, so now, how do we get the shapes of the polygon if I want to get creative? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up uh, the actual plot over here. Let me see if I can just do a split screen. Just hold here. Let's make this right, and we'll make this one left. I just scroll a little bit. All right, let's start with the first one here. So the first one is a two-panel triangle. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another screen with a bunch of dummy panels, just for my own reference. I'm gonna make it with 256, which is two panels wide, height by one. Doesn't matter how wide it is, but we'll screen 128, which is one panel. I'm just gonna take this slice here, drag it to the very corner here. Next, um, this one is going to be a half panel. So I'm going to take this, hit Alt, drag it here. I'm going to make it width 64 pixels. And I'm going to show you why I'm creating these panels as well. Um, one, two. Mm, let's just do it like this, since we already have the corners to snap it to. All right, uh, we should have enough ha here to uh, actually make it. So I'm gonna make another screen, I'm gonna name it Polygon. This is gonna be my Polygon screen. All right, um, let's just create a Polygon. So let's go to the little pencil icon here and let's draw this out and I'm gonna show you 
what I do and how I do and why I do. So now I'm going to start from the bottom corner. Um, I don't know why when I hover my mouse over it, it's not visible, but I could see the line. Now I'm going to snap it to this corner here, which is two pixels away from the corner, which is four half panels essentially, and it just continues. So this one's one half away, it goes down like this, um, and then it goes down on a 45 like that, and then right there. Alright, so this is probably going to well, snap it to the edges. I want to make sure it snaps because once you delete the dummy slices, it gets difficult to uh, maneuver the polygon points without actually having a reference. I'm saying you could do the math, but it just takes time and brain effort, unnecessary brain effort. Alright, so this is our first slice. This is the actual shape of the panels. I think that was pretty clear. Uh, let's go to transform. Uh, once you have a polygon in there, you can actually delete the original slice. You always have to have one thing in there. And we're going to name this one left. Should name it poly so we can determine the difference. Now, left poly. Okay, um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these five slices here. I'm just going to right click mirror X. So, what that did was the same exact thing there. But instead of drawing it there, I'm actually going to delete these slices. I'm going to delete this whole screen and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this slice here, the left poly. The only problem is I cannot just duplicate it and move it. And you know what, let me try to mirror it, see if it actually mirrors the shape or just mirrors the orientation. Mirror X. See? It did not mirror the it did not mirror the shape of the polygon, it just mirrored the position. So I'm just gonna show you a little neat trick how I do it without recreating it. So I'm gonna take it here, drag it to the edge, now I'm just gonna invert the actual panel. So now you see it just inverted the shape of the panel. So I don't actually have to redraw that polygon. Alright, um, Let's do the next one here. Um, this one I'm going to need a 128 slice. I'm going to make a screen here. I'm going to make this 128. This can be a simple one. 128. Now I'm going to take this slice here, drop it in the corner here, go into my polygon screen. You have to make sure it's selected when you're drawing polygons so it goes into that screen. Um, I don't know where my mouse is. One, two, three, four. I think that's a bug or some setting on my end where once I hit the polygon draw line, I can't see my mouse on the canvas. I'll have to figure that out. Usually it's visible. Alright, um, that's going to be our triangle one. Um, now I'm going to hit transform so it goes out of the edit mode. I don't know why it didn't go out of edit mode. Oh, it did. Sorry. Alright, now I'm going to hit duplicate. So the duplicate's in place. Or you can hit control D, it also works. Uh, mirror X. Now we could delete the screen here. Now as you can see, we have four of our walls here. Now we just have to create this center last section. Um, so let's see um, how many panels in the point is. So one, two, 2.5 panels, that's where the point is. All right, so that should be an easy one. Uh, I'm gonna go to screen. Uh, you don't have to keep deleting it. You can just adjust slices. I just believe it just to keep everything clean. So once there's a lot of screens and slices, it gets very cluttered. I usually keep track of it, but I'm just deleting them. So just keep it simple for you guys. Um, so we have to make this two and a half panels wide. So width would be uh, 256 plus 64. Just the easiest math I can think of offhand. Uh, height, we'll just make it 128, which is one panel. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it to this corner right here. And I'm going to hit Alt and drag it to the other corner. So we just have reference points for our polygon. Now I'm just going to go into the polygon screen, make sure it's selected. Hit Poly Tool. Uh, where is my mouse? Alright, I don't know where it is. Now I do. Let's draw it out. Okay, now we have that. Oh, let's just edit points. So just so you're clear how I got to this two and a half panel uh, point here. Why is it two and a half panels, not five panels? Watch, one, two, three, four, five. So it's two and a half panels from the edge, which each one of these half panels here are 64 pixels. So this is one full panel, which is 128, 256, plus 64. So this corner here. So that's how I do the math. All right, that is the corner there. Just make sure everything snaps to the edges. Alright, that's perfect. Let's go to transform. Now we're out of that 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the screen here, delete the screen here, and now I'm just going to readjust the, the size of the composition because the panels are actually overlaying each other because of the shapes. So I'm just going to snap it to edges here. I want it to snap to that one and that one. Probably have to do one at a time. So what I want to do is I want to have it 64 pixels away from this corner. So how would I find out what where this corner is? I'll go to edit points. I'll just tap the corner here and I'll see the X value, 1152. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this guy here. I'm going to go to transform. I'm going to go to left. So I'm going to do 1152 plus 64. Boom. That's the place. Now I'm going to go here, edit points, take this corner here. X is 1472. So, oh, this is going to be a little different because, so, because it's 1472, so I'm going to do 1472, and I'm going to do minus two panels because it's already two panels, uh, two and a half panels away from each other. So I'm going to do minus 256, and that should be perfect. Let me see if this will snap to the half point. Perfect, it snapped into place. Because basically it's taking a reference marker from the other side. So it snapped perfectly. Let me just make sure that one snapped too. Right there. Uh, no, sorry, it has to go to the bottom. There we go. This is our new composition size. So we're gonna take this, go to comp. Uh, sorry, let's open Resolve again. Go to Composition, Settings, um, Width, let's make it 3712. So where I'm getting this number from is here, I selected all the panels and the widest width is over here, the width. So it's 3712 by 640, apply. So there we go, that's our composition size. Um, I actually don't like the fact that it's touching, no, it's fine. Now I'm gonna go to my output transformation um, select all these slices here, right click, match, input shape, so just matches. Um, let's see, what else do we have to show? Oh, so let's just make the actual output. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to make it 3840 by 2160. So this is our 4K processor, so it turns out we don't even have to, uh, we don't even have to stack them in our processor or anything, it literally just fits in perfectly since we're using a 3.9 pixel pitch. So they ended up adding panels live, which made it a little bit complicated, but I think what they ended up doing was just taking this and putting it on the bottom like that. And one port was broken, so we actually had this one connected here. So it was something like this in the processor in the end, and it was also scaled. So once it was like that, it was like this, and this was our output. All right, I think that's it. I have to get going now. I have to take care of a few things, but I just wanted to show you a uh, resin tutorial, as I promised for a while, but I never got around to it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Um, and if you guys have any custom requests for anything complicated or something different, uh, please send it my way, and I'll try to get to it as soon as I can. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.